Hey guys and welcome back for another Ragnarok Origin guides. And in this Shadow Chaser series, I will be talking about the Masquerade Magician. They are more of a melee form DPS and are masters of hiding in the shadows. After playing this class for a while, I noticed that this class damage is way too strong. Let's start off with the Deadly Infect. It increases the P damage dealt by 20% when attacking targets with Masquerade and has a 10% chance to refresh invisibility. Agony Spread is one of its core passive that greatly increases its damage. You can see it after hitting a 3 attacks, a circle explosion can be seen, and it can be spammed when activating the Shadow Impact. But this will only take effect when you are in a Masquerade buff which only lasts 30 seconds, so keep that in mind. I prefer accessories to be removed by the Masquerade buff because accessories give a lot of stats and it also slotted with cards. So for me, it's either laziness or the unlucky. And do not be confused with the description. This is probably a typo error. Laziness will remove accessory 1 which is on the left side. And then unlucky for the accessory 2, not 2 accessories. Because if this description is correct, then why would I even choose laziness over unlucky? What's the point of having it there in the first place? Then later, I will show you the playstyle and auto settings for this one. But wait! Does your phone overheating when grinding? Or do you have a lot of accounts to grind at the same time on a different games? I have good news for you. UG Phone is an Android cloud phone that helps you AFK grind non-stop even when you close the application. This will let you save battery for your phone and your game will still run even when you have no internet access when you're outside. Also, UG Phone can open multiple instances that is applicable to other games like Ragnarok X, Mirror 4, Nightcrows, Ragnarok 20 Heroes, and many more games that have an immense AFK grinding. Just use my code 4F8CAA, or you can just click the link on the description below to get 488 diamonds so you can try the UG Phone for yourself. Download the UG Phone now for Android, iOS, or even on the Windows PC. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the video. And now let's begin with the stats. Max out strength for more physical attack and enough agility for 500% attack speed because your main skill cast delay is subjected to attack speed. Vitality for more HP and defense, then luck for more critical stats. Next is the skills, you can check this for your reference. For the Divine Armament Armor is the Charleston set because they are melee and have no shields. So that is why they still need some defenses. The weapon is the two-handed crossbow blade and the build is the Masquerade Torment. Radiant Ornament is Sunlight Freya Necklace or Ring with a build of Chaos for more skill damage. Cards are situational so you might be needing to switch depending on the monster or enemy type. Here is for the PvE setup. On the weapon slot, use the size, ratio, and elemental cards if you need to deal more damage especially when doing MVP or raids. And here is for the PvP. You need Marduk and Guyart for anti-crowd controls. The face wear, mouth wear, and weapon are situational. It's either you counter Dorams or Demi-Humans. For the card deck is Physical Empowering, the Minor Brutality, Berserk, and Major Brutality. And these are the enchantments for the headgear, facewear, and mouthwear. Armor, weapon, garment, shoes, accessories, backwear, and costume. For the virus course, the expert effect that you need are the malice, maiming toxin, shadow of soul, breathing will, and concealed teeth. Back crush is optional. Then for the novice effect is the core overload, windered module, and momentum management. For the sigil, they don't have any good sigil as of now, so just use any of these two. Then followed by the PvE sigils like Bloodlust, Berserk, Starfall, and Meteor. Then for PvP are the defensive sigils like Immortal Body, Surging Protection, 
Deadlock Aurora, and Braveheart. For the wardrobe, here are my recommendations. For the headgear is the Baddy Wolfie Hood. Facewear is the Ocean Imprint. Mouthwear is the Ruby Gem. Backwear is the Abyss 98K. And the costume is the Midnight Neon. For the pet recommendation is the Genesis. Earthlord to pull enemies around and slows them. Hit an Oracle for F2P players. And Child of Earth to negate some incoming damage. For the feathers, here's the settings for the offense. And here's for the defense. For the medals, consider adding more on bravery and heroism. And below, prioritize the rock medal, storm, fire, spring water, and innocence. For the mount rates, focus more on brave, charisma, and cute. And here's the equipment affixes. For the dexterity barding is the blitz. Sturdy is the resolute. Strength is destiny. And protector is toughness. Next is the nexus engine. For the modules, here are the stats that you need to get. Here is for the red, yellow, and green. And for the Nexus talent is the Graffiti Master, Invisibility, Strip, Fatal Menace, and Undaunted. Here's the Nebula Path for PvE. And here's for PvP. The Astral Sign is the Masquerade Magician and it is recommended to get the level 20 for more P attack gained every second when using invisibility and the effect still lingers for 6 seconds after invisibility ends. Level 40 for more damage to the target with a Masquerade debuff. Level 60 to gain P damage for each point of impulsion. Level 80 to inflict some random status effect to the target when hit by the Agony Spread. Then level 100 to trigger Agony Spread to the target if their equipment is successfully removed. For the Soul Force is the Primordial Aegis to survive attacks after leaving Stealth Mode. Then lastly is the Skill Settings. Here I have the True Sight which I copied from the Pharaoh using the copy skill of Stalker. This will be your best buff. Then put one Masquerade, it's up to you on what mask would you like to activate. But for me, I'm using the Unlucky or the Laziness. Then we have the strip to remove the target's equipment by a chance, fatal menace to dash to the target, shadow slash, and then the burst which is the shadow impact. Then on the second tab, put the gravity master so it will cast automatically when affected by crowd controls. Then on the manual settings, I have the backslide, invisibility, another invisibility which is the shadow seeker, the shield dodge, and then the counter instinct and weapon swap. This class might be one of the counter of Dorams as of the moment because it can deal huge amount of damage and on top of that they have the counter instinct that can block physical damage by 60% so I think it's time to overwhelm the class that has been reigning for how many patches. So if you find this video helpful then please leave a like and also subscribe to support my channel. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Lights out!